from a, tr from a caged audience here in the sweltering heat of the Fringe Festival. If you're not at the Fringe, it's been raining for two weeks. Suddenly the sun has come out. Yay! The cagoules have been thrown off. Scottish people are going barmy at the sight of a bright yellow thing in the sky. It's going to rain tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> We've got a cracking show for you this afternoon and we're going to start off with some comedy. Unbelievably, here at the Fringe, someone else from Scotland. <laughs> He's doing great guns uh, with the show Dealt a Bad Hand every night at 7.15 here at the Pleasance. He's here now. Please welcome the gorgeous Stuart Mitchell! <laughs> How are you? You well? Yeah. Good. Good. Do you know what? I'm always conscious when I come on stage, when I wave at the audience, because I'm missing the tips of two fingers. You see that? It's not a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's strange, isn't it? See, I went to a very rough school in Glasgow. <laughs> I bloody lost it. I gave me rock, paper and scissors. <laughs> Never mind, when it came to maths, I was very good at fractions. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you laughed at that. I actually just cut my fingers off, especially for that opening joke. <laughs> do, you think, do you think you would have noticed that? No. You think? See, it's normally tourists. A tourist will stop me in the street and ask me directions, and I feel guilty, because every time I point out a direction, they arrive 200 yards short. <laughs> Do you, it, do you think it's socially acceptable to ask? Do you think it's socially acceptable to ask someone how they lost their fingers? Yeah. Yeah. You say, what about a whole hand? <laughs> you do it, see, that's just bloody rude. <laughs> <laughs> see, I think a whole hand, you wouldn't ask. If it was a whole arm, I'd probably just pretend it was still there. Do you know that way? <laughs> but I'll be having a perfectly normal conversation with someone. For instance, how stressful it is for me to pick my nose. <laughs> no, seriously, even if I want to do a very quick, brisk flick, it, it, it looks like I'm going knuckle deep. <laughs> it looks like I'm trying to dislodge a contact lens. <laughs> oh, no, normally someone will double take. I'll be in conver conversation and they'll go, hey, how are you missing the tips? And I'll, I think it's rude. So I just wind them up and say, whoa, oh, I actually got a male manicure through Groupon. <laughs> and 33% off. <laughs> Does anyone want to have a genuine guess how I lost the tips? Oh, someone put their hand up. That's very polite. Are we just showing me all your fingers? <laughs> Is that anyone? Do you want to have a guess? Work related. Work related. Was it? I was actually, I was five and I lost them down a manhole. Do you know? I don't mean another guy's bum. I mean, <laughs> if you get something up your arse that can cut fingers off, probably best you get it checked. <laughs> it was a drain. Do you remember drains? I had a plastic, I was a big He-Man fan, and I had a plastic He-Man sword, and I dropped it down the drain, and my mate picked up the drain, and he let it fall on my hand. I know, that was my dad's reaction. <laughs> Except he was sick. But he thinks he's funny though. Every single Christmas, he buys me chocolate fingers and snap sends up, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what you're meant to do if you lose the tips? Do you know? Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. <laughs> That's right, you're meant to put them in ice, did you know this? But you're meant to wrap them in something first. Like cling film. Yeah, not like puff pastry. <laughs> 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 And my, my, dad my dad panicked and didn't know what to do, and he went completely chalk white. Right? And for a Scottish person, that is white. <laughs> like, just imagine a ghost after giving blood. That's how white we're talking about. Right? And all what I remember as a five-year-old is I get rushed to hospital, and I'm sitting in the hospital bed, and people always say, were you crying? And I wasn't. My body went into shock. And I'm staring at my hand like this, and the surgeon comes out to my dad in a bit of a panic. And he goes, oh, please tell me you managed to retrieve the tips, the digits. And my dad just went, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, I, just, uh, I couldn't do it. And my mum just looked at the doctor with an evil stare. And she went, oh, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> He's never lifted a finger in his life. <laughs> Do 
And about six months later, I got a letter through from the hospital. I actually thought they'd found them. <laughs> Imagine a sewage worker found them two days later. Two little fingertips floating by next to a sword. Because <laughs> people will say to me after a gig, did you manage to find your fingers? And I'm like, ah, clearly not. <laughs> They're not on my bedside table. <laughs> and my dad tried to claim compensation from the local council because of the accident. He kept saying, like, where there's a drain, there's a claim. <laughs> but they didn't pay out, but they paid for me to go and get measured for little prosthetic tips. I know, a kid doesn't want prosthetics. I wanted a hook. <laughs> and the doctor has shown me how to put them on with a special glue. I don't know what it was called. It was like, no more nails or something. <laughs> and I thought I'd get bullied. And the doctor's shown me how to put them on. He says, do not worry, no one will notice. I went to a family wedding. I shook somebody's hand and they walked <laughs> off with them. <laughs> anyway, you've been absolutely wonderful. I've been Stuart Mitchell. Thank you. That was uh, Stuart Mitchell, everyone. Uh, he's on at 7.15 at the Pleasance Courtyard. Catch him if you can. Now, I've been joined by the glorious, beautiful, amazing Felicity Ward, everyone. <laughs> Felicity and I had to ask for a footstool of some kind. <laughs> we are both very sure. We are both Ooh. quite sure. It's okay, sweetie. I've it's already just the expensive the set. We see GI in <laughs> the castle in the background. Uh, so, Felicity, how are you? I'm pretty good. Yeah. I, I'm very happy to be in a dress. It's warm enough to be in a dress. Very exciting stuff. Yes. And then I got outside and because uh, uh, I saw the sun, I'm like, oh, it's going to be hot. And then I got outside and went, oh, no, it's 19 degrees. So I was yeah. a little bit chilly walking over. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I spent yesterday was a very hot day and I spent the whole afternoon watching the men's marathon swimming at the Olympics. Just to cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> they swim for three hours and then they finish. At the end, I felt slightly disappointed, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? I don't know. Maybe they did a dance. <laughs> I oh, have you? I saw there was a, a, I just saw a, a clip of synchronised swimmers and yeah. sometimes they do a little bit of dancing outside it's of the pool amazing. first. It's amazing. I think we have different opinions. Oh, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was amazing. They look... No, like outside of the pool... They look a little bit like crabs. <laughs> not like crabs. I mean, like, like oh, okay, not that. Um, <laughs> but they, they, they go along. Yeah. It's amazing. I don't... It's I'm everyone not, I want to no, be. No, I'm like, get in the water, babes. No. It looks better underwater. No, they come in in their spangly, no, like, swimming not. costumes and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> I think we're watching different clips. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But you know when you go to the local... I would give that gold. <laughs> I would give you gold. You know when you go to the local swimming pool and it's just a bit rubbish and there's like like uh, plasters yeah, there's, there's in the no pool? There's no routines. <laughs> I just want to go to the swimming pool and do that. Just me. Because I've got a very different swimming costume that, you know, it's like a Victorian swimming costume. Yes. One that like a strong way. man. Like a strong <laughs> man. They lift the barbell. Yeah, off. and I'd like to walk into my local pool in Glasgow at that. You can. You just have to be in the play area. And they go, it's <laughs> <laughs> so nice that they let her out for the day. It's sweet. Yeah. Hey, what, what we should do is we should yeah. get other people and then we should line up at the pool. And you know how they do diving in time? Like, yeah. Like, just, I mean, I'm just trying to live your dream here. You yeah. don't look very excited about it, so I don't worry you, about I it. I thought you were going to suggest we did a synchronised dance. We can do a synchronised... We can, okay, I'll tell you, this is my fantasy. Not like that. <laughs> and um, um, I, I hope I, I am involved in that one as well. <laughs> All right, if we can just get a little bit of space on the couch here. <laughs> she's quite the predator. Um, she's small, but she'll get you. <laughs> I, I, what? That's the name of my show next year. Yeah, I'm small, but I'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's all small, but I'll cut you. Right. Um, I, it's not you. I, um, I look nice. I'm not. I'm awful. Um, uh, I, f I got to fly back to Australia a couple of years ago and they flew me business class. It was for an ad. And uh, so you fly from Edinburgh to London, London to Dubai, Dubai to Melbourne, and you get new sets of pyjamas every time you really? fly. And all of like the posh people are like, oh, thank you, you can take this now. And I'm like, give me all of them. So I've got four pairs of pyjamas from each leg. And this is my dream, is that I get a couple of mates and we choreograph a dance and we're called the Qantas Club dancers and it starts out that we're in like airline outfits and we come out and do the safety demonstration and then there's like a rip on the vinyl goes, yeah! and then hip hop comes in and then we rip those off and we've got our pyjamas underneath and then we do a great dance. The only thing is I can't 
can't dance, but imagine how great that would be. It's halfway through the fringe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I haven't slept for days. No, neither of us are sleeping well. So I saw your show, Felicity. It's I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's extraordinary and wonderful and beautiful. And uh, we were talking about the fact uh, we spend ages crafting a show and sometimes the best part of the show is a bit that you don't think is going to go well but just happens. And in your show, there's a specific part of it called Chicken Karaoke. Yes. And it is immense. It, essentially, how it came about is one night of, about a week ago, I was having a great time and I said the word work and I started laughing and then I didn't want to look more mental than I already was, so I explained to the audience why that was. And my boyfriend and I sometimes sing work by Rihanna to each other, but we sing it as a chicken. <laughs> And so I, I showed them and I said, this is what we do. We go, I mean, looking at the demographic, I'm not sure if you know what a Rihanna <laughs> is, but um, you've heard of chickens though, right? Um, but you could do any song. This is the thing. So now what I've been doing every night is I've been taking requests from the audience. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it's just, it's just turning to Can my you do, I'll do a request because we've got to finish in a wee second okay. with you. Just, uh, can you do Taylor Swift, Shake It Off? Um, oh yeah, okay. Um, it works for anything, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the best one is Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah. That's the best one. Yeah. I got to do it last night. We did this show. We both did this show called 60 Acts in 60 That's Minutes. Right, yes. So you get a minute to do an act. And so jokes are worthless. Uh, Susan did a striptease, which was great. Um, and, you missed um, out on that one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she did a synchronised swimming for one yep. and, and then I went out and I just did Total Eclipse of the Heart but the great thing is about starting that song you get to start with your back turn and then go <laughs> I mean now it really looks like an Amsterdam window <laughs> so everyone that's uh, Felicity Ward everyone it's been uh, <laughs> I've written jokes as well. I've yeah, there are jokes, well. but um, seriously, that's an excellent thing. You're going to hopefully do an extra pleasant show of just chicken karaoke. I know I am. I spoke to Ryan last oh, night. Oh, good. Yes, oh, I lovely. Know night. So if oh. you want to see me do that for as long as the audience will endure, it's going to be a free show after my <laughs> show one night. Uh, stick with me, uh, Felicity. We're going to have a bit more comedy now. You're watching live at the Pleasance in association with Audible. Please welcome the lovely David Elms, everyone. <laughs> Hi. No? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. This is so fun. I've never been on TV before, uh, so it's very exciting. Um, I was told that I would be on TV, and uh, it's great. I hope that no one tuned in just in the middle of that chicken singing and th <laughs> think, <laughs> thinks that that's what I'm about to do. I wish it was what I was about to do. That seems like a lot of fun. Uh, and it's so nice to be doing something in association with Audible as well. Um, I've always thought that I'd, I'd be, uh, always thought that I would be uh, really good at uh, uh, doing an audio book, um, <laughs> and uh, I'd like to make like to make that happen. Um, all of the books would be twice as long, and uh, very very nice and quiet. Um, but thanks so much for having me. I'm having a, a lovely time. I've got time for a couple of songs. Do you guys want to hear some some songs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go for it. Um, uh, this first song is um, it's about uh, mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but uh, love as well. It's sort of about um, working each other out. You know, figuring each other out. That kind of stage of a relationship. And it's called Oh Boy, Oh Mama, Oh Missy. You are a total mystery to me. <laughs> Thank you. How's that? Is that too loud? <laughs> I just have to check because uh, sometimes people can find me a bit much. <laughs> You're like a lock But I can't find the key and you're like a map But I can't find the key And you're like a dock But I can't find the key 
And you're like a song But I can <laughs> And you're like a buffet But I can't find the quiche <laughs> Oh boy, oh mama, oh missy You're a total mystery to me Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys are you guys are so nice. I wish you'd all come to my show. <laughs> it was so nice. It's, well, I've been having a nice time, but uh, uh, yeah, I think I can talk. The weird thing happened last night. I was having a really thank you. <laughs> it's just allergic to self promotion. Um, I was having a really nice gig, and then so weird. There was someone in my show trying to. Someone in the audience was trying to steal my act. It was really weird. They were being so obvious about it as well. They were just sat there they're taking notes. And I, I went crazy. I was like, get, get, the, get the fuck out of here. Get, get, get out. And like, hey, get him. shoot. And Ali went, oh, man, it really was. And then, you think that's bad? It was even worse. I found out afterwards that there was a reviewer in. <laughs> and <laughs> must have really thrown him because I got a terrible review. <laughs> oh. So annoying. Um, but uh, it's been mostly fun. Do you guys want to hear? Uh, uh, well, I've got time for one more song. Um, I'll stop asking you what you want. Although, uh, <laughs> I'll just do it. Just have, come on. So, <laughs> do you guys want to hear a song about uh, uh, love or, or, or a political song? Political? Yeah. Political, okay. Yeah. This is actually my first ever political song. So, um, uh, so I hope you guys like it. It's just... I know, it's just this year, you know, with everything that's happened this year, I just feel like, you know, we've just, everyone, we've got to, you know, we just, every, come on. That's, and and uh, uh, I just, yeah, this is the year, you know, you've just, you've just got to get political um, if, if you want to be nominated. And uh, so come on, let's do it. Um, and the song is called In the Current System. So that, that, if you, that's the system we're talking about, the current one. Okay. <clears throat> In the current system, sure is bad how some people use houses not for living, but for income and investment. And they squeeze the poor folks out. They just squeeze the poor folks out. And wouldn't it be nice, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be one of those people? <laughs> I want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the problem. Yeah, I want to be a part of the problem. Everybody, I want to be a part of the problem. <laughs> I want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the problem. Everyone. I want to foster a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the problem. I money, 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 money. But it sure sounds nice <laughs> to have more than one house. <laughs> Thanks so much. I've been David Holmes. Good evening. Thank you so much. Good night. That's it. That's it. David Elms. His show, Goody Boy, is on here every night at 9.30, so check him out. We've been joined by the gorgeous Pippa Evans, everybody. Give her a huge round of applause. 
Pippa Evans from the Olivier Award winning. Olivier and Award Chortle winning. Award and Chortle Award winning. Chortle. Let's not forget That's Showstoppers, right. the improvised musical. That's right. That's the show what I do. Yes. And it we make up a musical. Yes. You say the title, we make it up. Yes. That's how it is. Do you know, the only thing I really know about the Showstoppers this year, uh, Pippa, is that Showstoppers is on at 6 o'clock. My show's on at 6.20. And I direct 700 people to your show every night. <laughs> <laughs> they all come into my uh, venue, which is the Pleasance Above, which Felicity's in, which is not uh -huh. the Pleasance Grand. I can tell you that for nothing. Just a couple, just a couple of cheers shy, though. <laughs> just, you know. And uh, everyone else goes, is this the Pleasance Grand? And we all go, does it look like the Pleasance Grand? <laughs> so on a T-shirt I'm going to get printed just down the street and right at the traffic lights. Because <laughs> that's what I say. It's going brilliantly, though, isn't it? Oh, it's going very well, yes. We have, uh, we have lots of people come in and then we make up uh, wonderful musicals. Um, but we also do a kids' show in the morning. I have been to the kids' show. And the kids' show, I mean, the grown-up show's great, obviously. It's amazing. But the kids' show, we let the kids decide absolutely everything that we do. Uh, this morning, a lot of people died. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> a lot of people died this morning. Uh, there was a shark, and we said, um, what does a shark, there was a shark and a sea monster. What does a shark do to the sea monster? The shark snaps at the sea monster. Okay, snap, snap, snap. And then what happens? Uh, the shark tells him a joke. Uh, uh, so the shark then told a load of jokes. We got the kids up to tell all the jokes for the shark. Uh, and then the shark ate the sea monster. Uh, then all the dinosaurs came back uh, and then they were drowned. Yeah. <laughs> the show I went to see, uh, the kids decided that the gruffalo was to be dismembered. <laughs> <laughs> very violent children. Yeah, yeah very, very violent. And then they had Barack Obama burying Donald Trump. It was the most extraordinary <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's great. We just do whatever they say. Uh, so we never judge any of their... Absolutely. Uh, and, and it's quite funny because they uh, generally they moralise at the end. They do moralise at the end. So uh, the show will we'll say, what, what was today's story called? And they call it, it was the story of death. <laughs> <laughs> It's illuminating, but I like the way as well. Yeah, at one point, someone in Showstoppers went, and then they came back to life and rainbows and unicorns, and all the kids went, no! <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about sometimes the best parts of the show are the improvised kind of parts when you do an Edinburgh show. You're doing oh, another yes. show as well, aren't you? Oh, yeah, Bannemans. I'm doing a solo show you're as well. You're doing three shows a day. I mean, come on, Felicity. That's revolting. I mean, we've got to do, you've got to do what you've got to do. You know? I know, that's too much. You're yeah. doing too much. Well, yes, I mean, I am. But I'm you look so fresh, but, being um, that Pippa. This is I Envy speaking. I'm looking at you going, you look, I mean, you look like you've just come out of a sunbed. I'll be honest, I joined a spa. <laughs> did she did? I joined a spa. I like the way I, she, you look to uh, me like that. You would know what that you, was. <laughs> I'll explain, Susan. It's like, it's like I've fancy been to a washing. bloody spa. <laughs> I didn't like it, but I went. <laughs> it's got bubbly water. Bubbly, bubbly water. water. You line bubbly the bubbly water. Uh, yeah, so I'm, doing, so I'm doing a solo show, and that's a written show. And that actually was really hard this year to write a show because, and we have a saying in Showstopper, which came from Ken Campbell, which was, if you're going to make it up, it has to be better than if it's written down. Uh, so if you're going to do a show that's made up, it better be better than if it's written down. But we're so good at making things up now. If we're going to write it down, it better be better than if we've made it up. Right. Uh, so uh, so my show's about 50% written, and then the rest of the show comes from the audience. Right. Uh, which is really fun, uh, except sometimes, of course, audiences say things that you, you're just not expecting. So I have a bit where I ask about being the parents of ugly children. I say, is anyone here the parent of an ugly child? Uh, and uh, most people go, of course not. And this one guy said, I have no pictures of my child before the age of two. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then you all kind of go, well, I had to go to my, to my band and go, we need to regroup because I don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> um, I need to uh, get the final act on in a second. Before we go, though, it's, all, uh, it's kind of halfway through the fringe. Uh, any recommendations from either of you of other shows that people should be going to see? I saw yesterday Holly Byrne, uh, I Am Special, which is just as special as it sounds. Right. I would recommend that 100%. I went and saw Rose Matafeo's Finally Dead and it is so funny and so good. And Joel Domit's show is the best that Joel's ever done. It's so great. And I, I saw Harriet Dyer do a remarkable oh, yeah. 10 minutes of unexplainable something. Yes, that is Harriet. And uh, Harriet Dyer, I would highly recommend. I'd recommend your show because I saw it, but you've sold out all your tickets. How embarrassing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd recommend Showstopper, the improvised musical at the Pleasant Oh, you're Grand. so corporate. <laughs> you're so corporate these days, <laughs> I know. aren't you? Look at me, I've got a shirt on. I know, it's a, And an orange, because I didn't want to wear a bow tie, so I thought, what's kooky? She wasn't always like this, ladies and gentlemen. No, look here. Pippa used to... I know that's the worst possible picture. The worst picture. picture. Where did you find that, guys? It's like a that's thousand years old. That's when I have old. on my bedroom wall. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> 
I used to joke I had a Pip Evans altar, do you remember? <laughs> yeah, that was a funny joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> Felicity Ward performing her show, 50% more likely to die. I've seen it, it's absolutely extraordinary and brilliant every night, nine o'clock at the Pleasance above. Yes. Pippa Evans, Showstoppers, the improvised musical is at six o'clock, not in the Pleasance above, but the Pleasance Grand. And you know the uh, show? Same, same, but different is that uh, Bannerman's Bar on Cowgate. Love 145. Lovely. Both extraordinary. Give them both a huge round of applause, please. <laughs> we have time for one more act, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage the extraordinary Kate Lucas. <laughs> Are you well? Yay! Good, good. I hate the sick. <laughs> Just uh, anything to do with disease or, or death, really, I'm not a big fan of, because I'm, I'm not very good with death. I've been to one funeral in my life, and as a kid, I used to be quite sensitive, and I used to overthink things quite a lot. And I remember being in the church, it was for a family friend called Joan, and I said, I started crying, and my mum turned to me and said, what's wrong? And I said, I, I just feel really guilty, because... I feel like I should be thinking about Joan, but I'm wondering whether or not there'll be quiche. <laughs> <laughs> you look know, back at something like that, and I was so upset, but it was such a silly thing to worry about. There's always quiche. Um, <laughs> and I've been thinking a lot about death recently, um, because I recently got the shits and thought I was going to die. And <laughs> I, I, started to, I started to panic a little bit on the toilet, and I started to think, oh, fuck, I said out loud, please, God, don't let me die. I started to think, where am I going? Who are you talking to? I've always been agnostic because I firmly believe in copping out of big decisions. And um, I started to run through some options of where I could go. So I was like, Buddhism, that's a bit too quiet for me. Sikhism, it's a bit too hatty. Um, Islam, I'm too drunk. Um, and I was starting to run out of options and panic a little bit. And this is basically, it's just a song about trying to cleanse your soul and find God. Uh, on the off chance that there is one and you shit yourself to death. And I've <laughs> shortened the title to Choosing My Religion. I popped up to heaven to see God, who I haven't believed in for years. I said, God, you look great. I can see you've lost weight. I love what you've done with your beard. And God said, Child, I welcome everyone to share in bliss perpetual, so long as they repent and they are kind and heterosexual. All I ask is you adore me, that is all my petal. Slaughter something small for me, I want to know I'm special. Just be kind and humble, Kate. Kneel and worship, I am great. Tell me I am great, just tell me, Kate. I just like to hear the words, it always has affected me And when I don't get praise enough, I do get very tetchy I've been feeling insecure, I flood things when I'm snappy I've just drowned an orphanage, that's your fault, hope you're happy But I forgive you, all is fine Burn in hell, I've changed my mind, it's tough, it's too late now You're going down, 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 down And the devil said, come over here and greet me my name is Lucifer, do call me Lou. It's such a pleasure to meet me. Good God, I'm so handsome, it's rude. You've been to heaven, that must have been wild. How interesting, do tell me more. Paradise filled with the meek and the mild. Someone fillet me, I'm bored. Bug heaven, say your thing. Come hang out at my place. God's a crusty, uptight wang, I'm all about that base. Take your coat off, grab a latte, take your pants off, touch my dark place, come on, ring my bell, welcome to hell. You're all the way down and there must be a reason you fell. So don't be shy. Some of this was really weird. God's deranged and kind of needy. You're a whole new kind of creepy. I'll just pick my favorite bits. Be a massive hypocrite. It's what we all do anyway, because none of us are quite the same. We pick the bits that justify the way we like to live our lives. I don't often give advice worth listening to, but don't choose your religion on the loo. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was great. That's it. Uh, Kate Lucas.
Lucas. She's on uh, every night at 10.30 p.m. with her show, Whatever Happened to Kate Lucas. Thanks for watching Live at the Pleasance in association with Audible. We're back at the same time tomorrow. It's the greatest arts festival in the world. Uh, go and see the shows from everyone you've seen this afternoon. Thank you to the gorgeous audience. Uh, come and see my show at the Pleasance at 6.20 if you want to. It's not at the Pleasance Grand. I'm not Showstoppers, the improvised musical. <laughs> uh, we're back at the same time tomorrow with your host, Ian Sterling. Thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> I've always been a warrior. As a child, I remember hearing a joke about a chicken and panicking. Did he make it across or what? <laughs>